All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to go over should you learn how to code if you want to become a network engineer or if you currently are a network engineer, should you be learning how to code? So um, programming, right? A lot of a big, big effort within networking was, you know, for a while was, okay, if you're a network engineer, you're going to have to learn how to code so you can learn how to automate your configurations using Ansible or Python scripts to actually run those scripts, right? And that was a huge effort, especially back in the, you know, around 2018, I believe, 2019. And that was a huge effort. And here's the thing. I actually don't know how to code myself, right? I mean, I've coded in Python. I've coded in, in, in JavaScript in HTML and CSS and all those, um, you know, wonderful coding languages, even though HTML, CSS is not really coding language, but I've coded before. I've coded in Java. Right? I, I have experience in it. Um, I'm not to say I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a coder, but if you give me, you know, a terminal and you give me a um, sort of code editor, I can probably finagle my way with some AI. <laughs> so that's all I'm trying to say. Here's the thing. Do you need to know how to code? I would say no, you do not need to know how to code at all. Right? Coding is basically, you know, and especially as of right now, it's a lot of programmers I know are just copying and pasting code anyway. So like spending all this time learning how to code as opposed to learning networking fundamentals and skills and, and doing topologies, that's way more valuable if you're time as opposed to learning how to code. So let's say you're new. I'm going to talk from the perspective of someone who's new and then go from someone who's already in the industry. Okay. So if you're brand new, I would not spend any time learning how to code. It's not going to be beneficial for you. It's going to be a little bit of a time waster. It's, and like I said, coding and, and networking are completely different in terms of what you're learning. There's no like cross-functional thing where you're like, oh, if I learn a little bit of coding, it's going to transfer to networking. No, it's not. They're completely different, right? So networking, the thing is you're going to have to understand the fundamentals, IP addressing, subnetting, all that stuff. Spend all your time learning that. That's where all your time should be spent, in my honest opinion, because as soon as you get good at understanding the fundamentals and what spanning tree is, what ARP is, what MAC addressing, what MAC spoofing, all, all these things, right? Once you learn all that stuff, right, you're going to become an expert in the networking side, right? And then using those skills and, and, and doing packet tracer topologies or, you know, um, you know, G using GNS3 and labbing a lot, or maybe even getting hardware, that's going to be more useful every time. And maybe even after six months of doing that, you should have the skills to be able to land a job, assuming you're able to interview, right? Because most people, they really struggle with interviews because they don't know how to pass interviews. But if you know how to interview and you know how to do the skills, you can definitely get a job as a network engineer 100 the thing is are you willing to put in the work right but back to my question when should you learn to code then so okay let's say you end up do becoming a network engineer and you land that job and you're working right i would say maybe you know play around with it the thing is with networking you want to use the programming to make you a better network engineer right the way i use it is i use templatized code already i don't write code from scratch at all because I believe it's completely inefficient for me. I don't have time to write my own piece of code. What I'll do is either I'll go to you know go to GitHub, find some repository that's open source and, and use that code base to to sort of make my networking quicker. I'll use AI, use ChatGPT. I would use Cursor AI. Those are those are the two most powerful AI coding languages from from what I've seen. And those languages um are those um code editors, right? And I mean ChatGPT is really just spitting out code for you. But all I'm trying to say is I'm leveraging AI to write code for me. That is the most efficient way that a network engineer should use code. It shouldn't be spending like a whole day, three days trying to write a full, you know, creating these four loops and all this stuff. Complete waste of your time as a network engineer. All you have to do is it's so, so simple. Go to Cursor AI or go to ChatGPT. Those are the two best that I found. All I do is I do a text to speech, right? A I'm giving you guys practical advice. I do a text to speech into the either into the cursor editor or into actually what I usually do is I get it from ChatGPT. I get the code. I put the code in GitHub. Then from GitHub, then I put it in cursor AI. The AI then cursor AI is really the powerful one that's gonna make the code uh, usable for me. But even then, that's still too high level. You don't even need to do that. All you need to do is go on ChatGPT, do a text to speech, tell it exactly what you need, the exact requirements, maybe even feed it some data, right? Um, obviously your company has to allow you to use these sort of code editors um, or in, in these in sort of AI. If your company doesn't allow it, then obviously it's going to suck. You, you can use that. It's going to spit out a code and then that code can either create some sort of automation script or some sort of script. Really, most of the time as a, as a network engineer, we're just using scripts. I mean, there's no other reason. We're not building some UI or front end or back ends. We're just writing scripts at the end of the day. So we're just looking for the most efficient way to write a script. I get the script, I paste it in and it runs a script for me. Very simple. That's the most efficient way you should use it as a network engineer when you already become one. So that's simple. You don't need to learn how to code, right? And people are gonna say, oh, what if I want to learn how to code? And definitely learn how to code. It's, you know, spend some time, maybe take a course, but your main goal should be obviously be, be, being a really good network engineer and just leveraging programming, which is really just copying code from either AI or, you know, some other websites, right? And just copying the code from there and then pasting it onto, you know, your terminal and, and running it from there, whatever, right? So the thing is you don't need to learn how to code. That's how I 
would use it. That's how I use it. At the end of the day, that's that's all you really need. It's just a more of a time saver to write scripts. Because as you know, as a network engineer, we do a lot of manual work and a lot of that manual work can, and bloat can be a lot. Now, sometimes I have all these configurations that have like thousands of ACLs I got to look at. And what I'll do is I'll take the ACL and I'll say, hey, from, from this, can you just verify everything looks good? Can you also like maybe write a script for me for next time, like to create a template and it does that for me, right? There's a lot of things that you can leverage with AI. It's, it's more of a time saver. Um, and I'm saying AI with coding at the same time, but literally the same, literally the same thing. Because at, at the end of the day, if the AI can, the AI is almost like it's its own coder for you. Like it's actually doing it for you. It's writing the code and running it for you when, it, when you get the output, when you use ChatGPT. So that's how I would use it, right? It's super simple. Like I've built websites using AI in under five minutes. I literally just talk and then I get the code. I put it in GitHub. I put it in um, Cursor AI and then add some more updates and I'm done. I don't even have to write a single line of code. So that, that's kind of how I would do it. It's super efficient, it's super quick and you get the results that you need, right? So um, that's kind of how I do it. But um, to be fair, I do have some knowledge of coding and, and I, you know, I understand Python. I can read it. So I, I would say maybe from my perspective, since I already understand a little bit of the code base and understand like how to read it, maybe it's going to be a little bit easier for me to understand and how to write prompts for it. But once you maybe spend some time building some simple project using Python, I'd recommend Python or JavaScript, build a simple project just to have fun for fun, right? This is not something that you're going to use in real code or real production, but just so you can understand how coding works. Like what is a for loop? What is the if statement? Those kind of things that um, maybe you see in the code base and maybe you have to make some small tinkers with it. Understand that, understand CSS, HTML, understand all that. And I think you're really going to be good. So it's going to be super simple, but you have to learn um, the networking fundamentals first. Once you learn the fundamentals, then you can use that as a supercharged for your current skill set, right? So that's kind of what I would do. A lot of the times that's kind of what other network engineers that I work with do. It's really just a time saver. Write the code and boom. But now instead of writing the code, you can just have AI write the code for you. Right. That, that's really a difference. So it's up to you on what you want to do. Right. Um, am I a vibe coder for networking? Sure. I don't mind being a vibe coder. I don't like, here's the thing. People complain like, oh, I need to, I need to understand the fundamentals of coding. I need to go. Here's the thing. Why are we, why do we use calculators? Right. Why, why, why can't we just do everything by pen and paper? Oh, I need to understand it by using pen and paper. Well, you already understand the fundamentals because you've, I'm pretty sure in grade school, you've used, you understand arithmetic and you understand how to do 24 plus 85, right. On pen and paper. I'm pretty sure you know how to do that, even though that's pretty easy, but like maybe even 20, 25 five times 15 um, on pen and paper, right? We, we, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do that using the arithmetic method, right? But we use calculators. Why do we use calculators? Because it's fast, efficient, it's correct, right? Same thing with AI. It's getting to that point where it's almost getting, it's super fast, it's efficient, and it's 99% correct, right? So that's kind of why I use it. I use it as a tool. Um, if you say I'm not a coder, I would gladly take that claim. I would love to take that claim. I'm not a coder. But if I can find an efficient way to write code for me as a network engineer, I'm going to do that. Even if I'm a horrible coder, which I claim, and I don't like programming in general, if you, if you tell me to write code, I'm going to hate my life. But if you tell me, if you tell me to use AI to write it, I'll love my life. So that's kind of how it is. So as a network engineer, that's how I leverage it. Um, and be quick guys, like this is an emerging technology, right? Use cursor. Cursor AI is amazing. Use chat GBT. Amazing. If you're not using chat GBT every day, you are behind. You are critically behind, but do all those things. It's really going to impact your, your workflow. You're going to be super efficient and you're going to be a, be a better network engineer, in my opinion. So um, that's kind of how I would do it if I wanted to become a network engineer and learn how to code. Uh, but no, you don't only really need to learn how to code, right? Maybe in, here's the thing, like times are moving quick, especially in the programming side, it's, it's becoming accessible for the general public, right? To be able to code with no issue. So leverage AI. I know this has almost been like a conversation about me, you know, saying I don't know how to code and I use AI how to code, but hey, if it, if it writes good code for me and it's efficient and no bugs and I'm happy and I'm quick. Here's the thing. If it does something quick for me, I'm jumping on it, right? So um, sorry for yapping a little bit about this, but I just am a bit passionate about it because I'm not a fan of coding, but I'm a fan of vibe coding, right? So um, that's kind of how I see things right now. Um, leverage what, leverage the tools that we have and become, you know, a better network engineer by using it. So ne so programming is a tool, right? So use the Ansible scripts, whatever you need to do to be able to make your workflow as efficient as possible. So thank you guys so much. If you guys are looking to become a network engineer, um, I have mentorship program so click the link down below if you're interested in that um but if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you guys want to subscribe go ahead and subscribe go in the comment section below tell me if you're a programmer if you know how to code if you don't know how to code if you want to code i want to hear all of it so uh go ahead and put it in the comment section below thank you guys so much and peace